Hey, Will, uh, on your way here, would you mind dropping by my house? Yeah, I know you're a busy man. Me too. I just forgot something. Will you get, will you get me, will you grab my, Will, just listen. Will you grab my toothpaste and toothbrush? Yes, my toothpaste and toothbrush, you fool. I need it. I forgot it at the house. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get worked up. I'm feeling a little bit antagonistic today. I'll just, I can't get them myself, okay? I'll explain when you get here. Thanks. Hey, man, I, I got your stuff. Look, I'm, I'm sorry I was cranky. I, I really needed a break from the Kamek Kerfuffle Final Boss and Yoshi anyways, so it's all good. Um, hey, uh, real quick, would you light that lantern? This? I mean light it, it's not, it's not real. Well, just turn it on. <laughs> you know it's light outside, you don't really need a lantern. Also, you know how I feel about doing game talks outside, I'm a sweaty man, Keith. Uh, yeah, Will, about that, I've got to give up game talks. Why? Well, they're not exactly paying the bills. Uh, so, you know, to make a little extra money, I applied to be a From Software boss. Keith, I gotta admit, you're losing me. What? What? You know, From Software, Dark Souls, Bloodborne, Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice. And they just let you be the boss? Not the boss, a boss, Will. You know, like in the games. You know, people show up, they fight me, and if, you know, if they die and I win, I take half their money. And, you know, if they win, they get to progress and move forward. So why can't you do Game Talks and be a boss? Well, this, you know, this is my boss arena, and you just kind of cross the threshold into it, and it's right outside the studio. I can never leave. Uh, and, you know, I probably should have thought about, about that before I signed up. But, you know, the pay is good, because I'm actually, you know, I'm pretty tough to beat. I mean, I'm not final boss material or anything, but maybe one day. All right, well, good luck on your next fight, man. In the meantime, I'm going to be filming an episode just on JRPGs and the marvels of turn-based combat. Also, Will, I probably should have mentioned before you cross the threshold into my arena, but once you do cross in, it's kind of a From Software thing that you can't leave. Uh, so there's really only two ways out. Either you kill me, or I kill you. Now, you're not armed, I get it, so it's, it's going to be kind of a one-sided battle here, but I promise I won't make it hurt. From Software, you got to explain your games better. When you come back, don't worry, you're going to come back right at that lantern. Just make sure you don't come back into the arena, okay? Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Game Talks. It's been a while, my name's Keith. My name's Will. Will. We're still rocking and rolling. We're rocking and rolling. We're Here back from a accidental, we don't, I mean, maybe you don't want to tell the people it's accidental, but it truly was an accidental hiatus. We didn't intend to put a Game Talks on hiatus. Yeah, it's a combination of a lot of things going on in our lives. Uh, I'm a bit of an actor myself. I had a play I was in. A thespian. Uh, bit of an actor, bit of a thespian. Um, and then on top of that, it was a lot of uh, a lot of gaming rumors yeah. going around, Keith. Like you know, there was the, the Nintendo Direct scare of last uh, last week. You know, I, t I told you about this before. How just whenever it's been about two months from a Nintendo Direct, the rumor mill starts, starts churning, churning, and it's like we could report on this or we could look stupid in the next week. Yep. So we could just uh, not. So a lot of rumors and stuff that have just you know we've been sitting out of um, Sekiro. I'm not playing because I'm scared of it. That's <laughs> probably like the biggest game that I would say is out right now. Yeah, um, it's big. Yeah, Keith's still working his way through Bloodborne. Working on it. And um, that's actually a pretty decent segue, Keith. That a is a pretty decent segue. Unintentional, but I'm going to roll with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, edit out the part where I said unintentional. Um, but uh, so what have we been playing? As a game talk return to form, yep. it's been a while. Let's talk about games. Just talking about games. Let's what have we been playing? Games. What have I been playing? What have you been playing? Will, I have made, I have given myself a challenge. Mm hmm. Uh, video games for me is not always something that I look for a challenge. I'm not always looking for blood, sweat, and tears when I jump into a video game. But there are times 
when I when I do desire a challenge, when mm-hmm. I want the feeling of achievement. I've been playing Bloodborne because of that. <clears throat> the reason I want to play these games from software games, I've never been interested in them before. The the type of storytelling that they get into with the whole environmental stuff and like I have to like really dig for what for not only the deep parts of the story, but I got to dig just to find out what the heck is going on yeah. in this world. Like I got to spend an hour in a menu to find out what is what 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 am I doing? Mm-hmm. I don't care for those kind of things particularly, but I listen to a lot of people who just gush over these from software games, and I was like, I gotta try it out. So I download Bloodborne. I, I mean, I was, I listened to. We talk about the Easy Allies a lot, so I listened to a lot of their stuff. Ian Hink, great, great, great person. Big, big fan of Ian. Very talented, but he was always talking about Bloodborne. Mm-hmm. Bloodborne's the greatest game, blah blah blah. And I'm thinking, no, it's not. No, there's no way. Have you played Ratchet and Clank Three? Yeah. Have you played any, <laughs> anything that's not that? Yeah. Uh, and so finally, after so much gushing over this game, I tweeted at. It. I was like, "I'm going to play it because you've talked about it so much." And he's like, "Good, good, good, good on you, or whatever." So Sekiro, I want really, I like the way Sekiro looks. I was like, you know what? I touched Bloodborne a while back, but I'm giving myself this challenge. I'm not going to play Sekiro until I beat Bloodborne. That's intense. And so I have been cruising very slowly, very agonizingly through Bloodborne, but I am enjoying it way more than I ever thought I would. The challenge. I have somehow developed more patience than I used to have, Will. I used mm-hmm. to be very impatient. Like, probably when I first started playing video games, if you would have put Bloodborne in front of me, things would have got broken. I would have shouted. I would have been screaming into pillows. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's ridiculous how many times I've died, but now... And I've heard someone, I've watched a lot of lore videos on Bloodborne because I want to understand what's going on. And one of those things, one of the guys was just talking about how, why it's such a great game. And he was like, part of Bloodborne, part of, part of From Software Games, part of the Soulsborne series is that when you die, you can't blame it on the game. You know, mm-hmm. like there's a lot of games like, oh, I press this button or whatever. Like when you die, there's a palpable sense of, I know what I did wrong. Mm-hmm. I got greedy or I pressed this button the wrong way or I did something wrong and now I'm dead and I, gotta try, I can try it again. And there's something about that that to me that uh, you know gives me more patience. That mm-hmm. I know, okay, I know what mistake I made. Let's let's, let's try it again. Let's try it, it sounds again. very intoxicating. It is. The it's, cycle. Yes, the cycle and the challenge. And then uh, if you, I'm I'm thinking about doing a highlight once I finish it, like the re, my reactions to every boss I did on stream, because uh-huh. like you, you like the, the, I, I'm sure you could probably see it in my eyes when I look down at the health bar and there's like. I'm within reach. (laughs) And so I'm like, you know, really focused and finally you kill it and it says, pray slaughter. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah. You you freak out. And it feels so good after like all like, all your muscles are tight and you're like, come on, just one more hit. And you finally get it and then this just sweet, sweet release. But I've been playing a lot of Bloodborne. I'm not into horror. I'm not, I mean, I'm interested by Lovecraftian horror. Is it horror-ish? It's in the horror genre. Okay. It's definitely definitely Lovecraftian cosmic horror, you know, like Cthulhu okay. monsters and mm-hmm. all kind of weird stuff like that. Very, I'm not into the Victorian kind of style. Mm-hmm. It's really interesting that I'm not into any of the pieces of this game, but throw them all together and I'm I'm cruising through it. Maybe it's just because yeah. I get to walk around with a big old axe. Could be part of it. Yeah, could be part of it. I love axes. It's just God of War, really. <laughs> <laughs> God, Keith, you, you're making me want to play this game, but I'm just I'm so scared. I I don't know. I'm scared to buy it. Either not like it as much, or just hit a hard wall. Yeah. And but it sounds like what you're saying there's there's always a way to power through it. Some people say that Sekiro is e- really easy, or not really easy, but easier than the other ones. That's interesting. I would have figured Sekiro would have been the hardest, just because this is the first time I've heard a bunch of games journalists crying about it being too hard. That's true. Um. So. Yeah. I don't know what that is, but uh. I've never been into games journalism when any of the other ones came out, so I wonder if this was maybe I haven't yeah. been paying attention. Maybe I wasn't paying because yeah, I wasn't. I don't even remember Bloodborne coming out honestly. Right. I was I was strictly a Nintendo guy during like early PS4 mm-hmm. days, but um, yeah, not. I don't really have anything to say about uh, Bloodborne, but I will say Sekiro. Um, if I do play that, because I'm not going to issue myself the similar challenge, because uh-huh. one of them sounds intimidating enough to me. Yeah. But if I do ever bite the bullet on Sekiro, I will say that one thing that looks really fun about that game, Keith, I haven't seen a ton of gameplay, but there is a grapple. Oh, or yeah. A, a Spider Man ish oh, yeah. looking thing. It's like a mixture of Spider Man and Batman, mm-hmm. where you're going up on things, you're creeping over them, then you're dropping down and getting them. So it seems kind of Batman y. Yep. But um, yeah, um, 
I'm interested. In There's that ways game. to get away in Sekiro. You know, the the way I look at it is like I think I could handle Sekiro better than Bloodborne because in Bloodborne, like, there's nowhere to go. Yeah, like, there's there, nowhere to hide. The game punishes you for running away, and it rewards you for just getting in there. And you know, because in mm-hmm. Bloodborne, if they, they if someone attacks you, it brings your health down, but there's still that yellow bar. So if someone attacks you and like you knock my health down halfway for a split second, I could gain all that health back if I attack you enough. Ooh. And this has like a like this bloodletting mechanic. That's kind of cool. It is. It, it is, encourages you for getting greedy. It has led to many deaths. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. <laughs> it has I can imagine. To, give me that health back, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's been tough. It has been quite a ride. I think we ought to we ought to sit down together. I think you and I sitting down together and streaming some from software madness would be really entertaining. Okay. I Am I playing? It. it doesn't matter. I mean, okay. I think I think my commentary over your play or your commentary over my play, it, it would be equally entertaining. We can just take turns on bosses. Yeah, we could do that. Okay, that sounds fun. You heard it here, folks. Well, what have you been playing? What have I been playing? Um, I've been playing two games, Keith. One new, one old. Mm-hmm. You, you're talking about an old-ish game, so yep. I'm going to go into my old one first. I've been playing Pokemon Black version. Mm. Now, this game is very integral to the whole backstory of what it is we're doing right here. Of course. Um, because the way me and Keith actually got started on this whole talk about video games thing is I told Keith, Hey, Keith, it's been a while since you played a, a classic Pokemon game. Since Blue, I believe. It's been a while, yeah. <laughs> since Blue. <laughs> My whole uh, life. Since <laughs> you were about six. Yeah. Um, so, how about 20 years later, you play through uh, one that you missed along the way, Pokemon Black. And we had a weekly, semi-weekly check-in series that we did where you mm-hmm. played through it. It was a great time, had a blast, had our own little Brandon Place Pokemon going on. Yeah. It was fun, and um, you know, I honestly cannot believe, Keith, that I did not replay it after we did our series, because I cracked this girl open, and like, what I normally do before I start a new save file is like, check, check the old one, yeah. see, what, see what was going on. The last one was from 2017, and I missed a year, Keith. I, this is one of those games that I generally play through at least once a year. Wait, you didn't... Um, did I play that? I played Black, right? Keith, it might have been a different cartridge i was about to say would my save file have been on there you would have been able to see i thought it would have bacon and everybody yeah that's weird maybe i have two versions of black shout outs to my boy that's weird but yeah shout outs to bacon i started with uh snivy this time um he's become my favorite over the years uh Mm -hmm. bacon right there used to be my favorite but i've discovered some things that uh that you can do with with snivy that are pretty dirty okay um real quick i we we've talked about this game to to a, to a very uh, elaborate extent before yeah, go back and watch that, that, um, that yeah, series go back and watch that one see keith's thoughts on it um i've just got like two new things that i've noticed that i love about this game playing through it this time one is that superior is actually pretty dirty keith he Who's can that? do some dirty That's... things snivy's final evolution okay. he has this move called coil which ups his defense his attack and his accuracy so you use that move, even if somebody's hitting you with sand attack, you're constantly up in your accuracy to get that over with, mm-hmm. and then you're up in your attack and your defense. So once you set up a few of those, not only do you have this super big, beefy snake dude that can take a bunch of hits, but he can also dish out hits. Mm. Really good. And it just feels really nice to use him. Um, what's the other thing? Bianca, Keith. Do you remember Bianca? She was, uh, you had two this rivals. Was a human. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. okay. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Yeah, you had two, uh, two rivals, Sharon and Bianca. Bianca was the, the kind of flighty girl. Uh, yeah. We, we mm-hmm. can say ditzy. It's all out of love. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's some things, that I didn't really like her um, a lot of the times I've played through this game. Uh, I like her a lot more in Black 2 once she kind of finds herself. She becomes Professor Juniper's assistant sure. in Black 2. She finds 2. herself. She finds herself. Um, but in this one, there's just little things of dialogue that I'm noticing that I've skimmed over before or just haven't hit me as hard. Like there's one where Team Plasma steals her her Muna, mm. and you you battle Team Plasma. They give her her Pokemon back, and she's like, "Thank you so much." And the gym leader that's helping you out is like, "Don't thank them. They stole your Pokemon." And she's like, "I'm sorry. I just I don't. I'm just happy to have him back. I don't know what to do. I'm sorry." It's like that that's that's endearing. And uh, what's another little funny thing that Bianca did? Uh, it'll come to me. It'll yeah, come to me. Hurt, hurt. Bianca, it, it's endless, endless onslaught of hilarity with Bianca. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's a great way to describe it because I would I I can't. I can't do it. Well, I can't get the emotion from these characters, and I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. I love that you can. I love that. I love to experience it through, like, to see how other people experience it. And I feel like mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm broken. Yeah. Am I? Am I too far gone? Am I too far gone into the world of adulthood that Pokemon doesn't emotionally grab me anymore? Maybe Keith. Maybe it just didn't capture you at that crucial time. Maybe that might be what it is. Um, but I believe in you. I think other JRPGs, you could probably do it. But the thing so. with the Pokemon, you really have to put in a lot of your own emotion into Pokemon. Sure. Because there's not a lot on the surface. Because, um, I mean, at the, end of the day, at the end of the day, these are kids' games. So. At the end of the day. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> he didn't kids say that. Kids' games that I love. I don't know what you thought you heard. Pokemon is my favorite. Where's Primarina? Primarina. My favorite. Um, well, when you flop that up here, it just looks like a 
just a bunch of different plush parts sewed together. What is that actually supposed to look like? It's a little okay, there we go. A seal mermaid that sings. Look, you can pose her arms too, so it can be like she's singing. That's beautiful, Will. <laughs> Thank you, Keith. I'm glad that you enjoy it. That's beautiful. Um, yeah, we're talking about Bianca. Yeah, Bianca amuses me. Yeah. I like the rivals a lot in this game because they're not they're not jerks. They're your friends, but mm -hmm. you still want to you still want to beat them. You like I like how Sharon's trying to. They're, they're, we're all just trying to find ourselves in this yeah. game. Is kind of what it is. We're friends on this journey of young adulthood together, and um, I just like it a lot. I also like how the gym leader or not the gym leader. The rival battles are paced. Whereas after every gym, you're going to either fight Charon or Bianca, possibly both. Yeah. So I just really like that. I feel like these are the rivals that you get to know the most out of any other game. Sure. Every other game, it's kind of like, oh, this is your guy. This is the guy that you're going to be fighting throughout the game. Don't ask why. Yeah. With black and white, you really get a sense of, like, these are friends. And I think that that's the thing that makes black and white. I, I go back and forth between whether gold and silver or black and white are my mm -hmm. favorites. Right now, I'm feeling black and white yeah. just because there's a real powerful sense of, like, emotion and character growth yeah. and figuring out who we are and all this stuff. I just really like it. It's the most JRPG-ish of the storylines in Pokemon. Sure. It's all about, you know, groups of friends fighting evil, finding themselves, finding out what's true and what's false, finding out what's right, what's wrong, things like that. Aren't we all just a little bit in a JRPG? We are, Keith. We are. Aren't I think we, we all have a JRPG party. If anyone out there really thinks about it, you can yeah. come up with a JRPG party for Pretty yourself. Um, you been playing anything else, Keith? Played Anthem some, well, since the last time we talked, and you're absolutely mm. right. <laughs> I mean, I haven't played it, but I've, I've seen the scathing reviews. What's ang what angers me about Anthem is just how it doesn't fit together. They did an exceptional job making flying robots that are fun to shoot things with. Mm -hmm. It's exceptional. The gameplay, playing that game, feels great. When I jump up and I hit the left stick to fly, and then I hit the right stick to hover... Then I hit the left stick to fly again. Then I drop to the ground and I launch with a rocket off my wrist. And then I take out my big machine gun, brrr, mow down some people. And then I like walk up to them with the shield on my Colossus and smack them away mm -hmm. and stuff. I'm thinking, man, this game is fun. I was about to say, I'm on board so far. Yeah. But then they put you in mission. So it's all, it's everything that goes around it. It's everything that makes, it's everything that gives you the context for this combat. Mm -hmm. If If it was like a $10 game that that's all you did was fly around with robots and shoot things like oh that's an amazing game but it's all the context for me that breaks it like the your fort tarsus your home base got to load into that you know you if you want to go home you just hit you know go back to fort tarsus then loading screen now you're in fort tarsus you're a first person you're walking around talking to people it's not to me entertaining it is, it's just so separate from this world yeah like you could fly back there to where you come out like you come out of it and you jump off this ledge or whatever but it would make more I, maybe they can't do it but it would make far more sense to me that if you just had a player avatar third person that you walked around with you hit like triangle to get into your rocket suit and then you flew away from a point on the map that was your base mm -hmm. right I mean again I can't tell you how to do that yeah. but I think that would be cooler mm -hmm. uh, also in missions so the story is you're a singular person you're a singular freelancer and you're the person who's like gonna save the world or whatever I guess but in all, every mission there's they encourage you to have four people so in every mission there's four of you but like you're the only one that's important. And yeah. everyone is experiencing the same thing. That They're the only one that's important, you know? Mm -hmm. And it just is a big disconnect for me that, like, why am I hanging around with these four other people when, like, I'm the only one who's important? It just doesn't make sense. Why is everybody only talking to me? The story... I, I've, I've only played, like, five or six story missions. It's just not... It's not enough to hook me. Mm -hmm. The gameplay... is sad to me that the gameplay, which is absolutely exceptional when you're in the... When, mm -hmm. when you're in the suit is not enough to... Like, just to... All the context outside of it is broken. There's no satisfying skeleton for it. Yeah, it's just, it doesn't. It just yeah. doesn't fit together. And so it's fun to play, but sadly, I got to give Anthem a poor review. Will you've been playing a new game, and I'd like for you to tell us about that before we're done today. My new game that I've been playing, Keith, is Yoshi's Crafted World. Mm -hmm. Now this is an amiibo from Yoshi's Woolly World, but uh, they didn't make one for for Yoshi's Crafted World. Don't know why, because I would have bought it in a heartbeat. I'm sure you would. But um, yeah, Keith, I, I really, really, really like this game. Um, like it more than I thought I would. Yeah. It's longer than I thought it would be. There's a lot more content in it than I thought it would be. Um, it does this cool thing where, I, correct me if I'm wrong, folks, in the comments, but I don't <laughs> know if in other Yoshi games they did this, where unless you find a certain amount of smiley flowers, like little hidden collectibles in every, mm -hmm. in every level, like it's gated off. Like you'll do a, a, few, a certain amount of levels that you get to a new little thing and this little guy's like, hey, give me this many smiley flowers or you can't go forward. Yeah. Um, I don't remember that in any other Yoshi game. And this one, so it actually... Throughout 
within the game itself is encouraging you to search through every one of these levels. Yeah. Um, which I think that's where a lot of people can come at these Yoshi games wrong. If you play them like a Mario game, if you play them like a Donkey Kong Country game, you're not going to have fun because the levels aren't designed for that. Um, it's really slow paced. You can pretty much hover in the air indefinitely. So there's not a lot of platforming challenge. It's about getting everything in one run of a level. Hmm. So it's about finding all the smiley flowers. There's some that involve like really good, like really fast timing, stuff like that. Um, so the whole the whole collectibles thing is really endearing to me. Um, the graphics, you, you know what this game looks like, right, Keith? Mm -hmm. It looks like literally everything in the game is constructed out of some real world material. Yeah. And the way that they just go all in with this, mm -hmm. I really really like it. You will not see a thing in this game that is not created out of some kind of paper mache or ice That's or cool. some some real thing. Uh, like there's one part where you're you're running through a bunch of walrus mouths. Mm -hmm. There are a bunch of walruses with their mouths open. You're running through them, and their teeth are icicles, and the teeth fall off. Mm. So you have to dodge their teeth because like they're going it. through their mouth. Stuff like that. Um, just extremely endearing. Uh, and the the once you beat the game, it gives you four secret levels, nice. which not a ton of levels. They could have done a. Usually they do a full world in a game like this, but four mm. levels is enough for me because with each one you have to have 30 smiley flowers to get to each one. So it encourages you to go back to old levels that you played through in the main game, get yeah. more smiley flowers so that you can play those final bosses mm -hmm. or those final levels. The final level is a boss rush that is way harder than the bosses that they're based on. Hmm. Still have not beat it yet. There's a really dirty thing with timing at the end where yeah. you're in this little, they call it the Gogo -Go Yoshi. It's like a big robot mech thing that Yoshi nice. gets in. He's got a boxing glove and you have to aim it and punch things that are coming at you while mm -hmm. you're moving. And the timing of pressing the punches, you can't just mash the punch over and over. Oh, no. You have to time it a certain way or you're going to get hit by one of those things. And if you don't have a perfect run on that final phase, you don't beat the boss. You have to hit every single one of the things or it wow. just keeps doing you through the same phase over and over again. That's crazy. Really mean. Um, That's really mean, Nintendo. <laughs> so I've played this game a lot more than I thought I would, Keith. Yeah. Really like it. Um, I was going into it thinking it's probably going to be like a 7.5, something like that. I'd drop an 8.5 on it. An 8.5? Mm -hmm. That's a great review. Yeah, I'd say it's a great game. Well, I would long for the day that someone would come to us and really care how, how we'd rate a game, you know? I long for that. I long, I want to do some reviews. I care. Kevin you, cares. Kevin cares. Kevin. Part of the show, Kevin McAbee. I miss Kevin. I haven't spoken to Kevin via the comments in a long time. Kevin ain't yeah. been watching them gameplay videos, have you, Kevin? Come on, Kevin. He ain't been come watching on, them. He ain't been Kevin. dropping them likes. And been preaching that tank media gospel, which is what you all should do. Thank you so much for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe on this one. And don't forget, we got all kinds of stuff going on on this channel. Don't forget about Game Talks. We're going to be trying to do those as weekly as we possibly can. Uh, don't forget about our streams, which occur every single weekday morning, except for Wednesday morning at 5.15 a.m. And then on Tuesday nights at about 9.30 to 11 or midnight. Well, depends on what we're doing. Bryce and I were on stream the other night, and we said, hey, if you guys want us to keep going, you got to let us know. And no one did, because we were playing Borderlands 2. Whole game, not a lot of people hanging out. That was just me and <laughs> so Bryce. So it was bedtime. Yeah, that was, that was just me and Bryce hanging out, so we went to bed. Yep. <laughs> uh, so, what else we got? Dungeon Boys is on a bit of a hiatus, but we're going to bring that back. Don't worry. we got two weeks without an episode, but don't you worry. We're doing good. And like I said, I'm just, it's good to be back in the saddle, Will. Great to be back. Also, we need to explain, we're in a different place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of funny, they bought us out yeah. this time. Greg Miller's been harping on us for a while now. Showed up with about 320s and we couldn't say yeah, no. Yeah, we couldn't say no. 60, so the studio is no more. Yeah, 60 bucks, we bought us We bought us this Pepsi. Yeah. Should That's we tell them the truth? Uh, I will. Okay. Um, we showed up at the studio and someone had crashed into the power pole and there was no power. So we had to do a plan B studio action over here in a vacant house. Hopefully the owners don't come home anytime soon. We'll be cleaned up now here before they know it. Uh, but like I said, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And remember, we love you very much.